Hi everyone, how are you all? Myself Nagappa, you are watching Appa Chemistry Classes. So now today's topic is Alkaline Earth Metals. These Alkaline Earth Metals, it is a 2A group. Alkaline Earth Metal, we had seen Alkali Metals. It is a second A group or second group element. Now it is belongs to what? S Black family. Now what are the elements which are present in the Alkaline Earth Metal? Beryllium, Magnesium, Calcium, Strontium, Barium, Radium. These are the element which are belongs to alkaline earth metals now here one of the radioactive element is that that is radium radium is the only the element which is radioactive element remaining or non radioactive okay na? so now you see the general properties of these uh, second a group element alkaline earth metals why they are called alkaline earth metal detailly we will see and along with the numerical questions also now the general electronic configuration of uh, this alkaline earth metal will be ns2 the oxides of these all elements are what basic except uh, that beryllium oxide thermally very stable compounds of high thermal stability are called what earths so these uh, second a group elements will form the what high thermally stable compound so for that reason these are called earths so and hence called the water alkaline earth metals now what are they here radium is discovered from the one of the ore for the radium is what it is pitch blend okay na u3o8 is the formula of pitch blend uranium oxide from that uranium oxide you are going to extract this radioactive element radium now by madam curie it was invented by the madam curie so for that reason that madam curie got the nobel prize is uh, awarded with the nobel prize also it is the radioactive in nature so it is used in the water uh, in the cancer treatment in radiotherapy <coughs> now we are going to see the how the periodic properties varies in groups and periods we'll see first atomic radii so we know that top to bottom atomic radius increases okay na? but whereas if you are comparing with the alkali metals alkali metals are having the what more uh, more atomic radius when compared to this alkaline earth metal so this atomic radius will be less than the alkali metals next density first decreases from beryllium to calcium beryllium to calcium it will be decreases because size increases after that strontium barium will be so it will be further increases what is the reason here due to poor shielding of f orbital and also here density of calcium is uh, least why it is having least because of uh, greater size okay na? so volume will be suddenly it will increases so for that reason it has the what to less, lesser density ionization energy will be what happens size is decrease increases from top to bottom so ionization energy will be decreases from top to bottom so that beryllium is having the beryllium magnesium have the high ionization energy compared to the calcium strontium and barium so these ionization energies are greater than alkali metals first year group melting and boiling point you see so the melting and boiling point depends on the what to metal to metal bond strength we know that now here beryllium small size high bond strength calcium beryllium after that calcium the magnesium has the what to lower melting point okay now when compared to it is one of the exceptional beryllium calcium strontium barium magnesium now beryllium boiling point if you had seen <coughs> boiling point will be decreases gradually from top to bottom but this barium has the water more boiling point when compared to the strontium is that clear now next hydration enthalpy if you had discussed <coughs> decreases with the size now whatever the when we are going from top to bottom size decreases size increases then what happen hydration enthalpy uh, hydration enthalpy will be decreases so whenever it has the smaller size more number of water molecules are surrounded so it will have the water more hydration energy beryllium has the water highest ionization energy and hydration energy also now higher than the water alkali metals if you had taken here whenever we are going from top to bottom the combining capacity with the water molecule will be decreases now you see here magnesium can combine with eight number of water molecule calcium can combine with the six number of water molecule but sodium chloride potassium chloride do not form such type of hydrates and also barium chloride if you are taking which can combine with only two number of water molecule it's a hydration energy will be less next 
oxidation state of here oxidation state will be shown by these alkaline earth metal will be plus 2 so in this plus 2 oxidation state they are not having any electrons so for that reason they are in diamagnetic in nature and colorless so which are colored here only beryllium <coughs> beryllium and magnesium are colorless except to this beryllium and magnesium will show the different uh, element will show the different colors now reducing nature if you had seen the reducing nature of these alkaline earth metal will be less than the alkali metals top to bottom reducing character what happens to so increases top to bottom reducing character increases now if you had taken barium is the most reducing agent the beryllium actually it is a small size so it should not be uh, act as a reducing agent its reducing agent nature is due to small size and high hydration energy for that reason it has this slight reducing nature if you had seen the flame color beryll except this beryllium and magnesium all give the color due to small size and high ionization energy this beryllium and magnesium will not give the color but uh, whereas if you take the calcium calcium will have the what to brick red color strontium has the crimson red color barium has the apple green and radium has the caramine red so these are the colors which are flame on the flame so different colors are given by the second year group element next if you had seen the anomalous properties of beryllium which is very important so beryllium compounds are predominantly covalent due to high polarizing power due to high polarizing power beryllium is amphoteric in nature it can react with acid as well as base whenever it react with acid it forms the beryllium chloride plus uh, releases the hydrogen gas and also beryllium can react with sodium hydroxide and forms the sodium beryllate along with that hydrogen now beryllium oxide and beryllium hydroxides are amphoteric in nature but remaining all oxides and hydroxides are what basic in nature beryllium exhibit the what coordination number of four only but whereas other uh, element if he had taken they can exhibit more than four why it will show the only four coordination number due to lack of t orbital it is not having d orbital beryllium forms the got complexes but remaining do not show the greater tendency of formation of complexes why beryllium only forms the complexes due to small size it can uh, accept the water uh, it can bind with the ligands very strongly so it can form the water complexes but remaining do not show greater tendency to form the complexes due to their large size next one beryllium and aluminium shows the water diagonal relationship the diagonal relationship is due to similar polarizing power similar electronegativities okay na so diagonal related these two are now beryllium chloride how it will react with water and forms the beryllium hydroxide similarly aluminium chloride also react with water and forms the aluminium hydroxide the beryllium hydroxide and aluminium hydroxide both will be what amphoteric in nature if you are comparing beryllium and aluminium have the strong tendency to form the complexes due to their diagonal relationship you can see beryllium fluoride tetrafluoride aluminium hexafluoride so aluminium tetrahydroxy compound beryllium tetrahydroxy complex it will form both react with carbon and they form the water beryllium carbide and aluminium carbide on hydrolysis give the water both will give the water same product that is methane beryllium carbide and aluminium carbide both will give produce the water methane if you are doing the hydrolysis of magnesium carbide so you are going to get the propyne ch3 c triple bond ch that is called water propyne now next chemical reactivity second year group elements are what less reactive than the first year group element because of small size and less electropositive than the alkali metals so these alkaline earth metals are less reactive reaction with air and water if you had compared so all the element react with the air so that is oxygen and nitrogen they form the water respective oxides and nitrogen so top to bottom reactivity will be what happens so increases the topmost element beryllium and magnesium react very slowly when compared to the other element the beryllium powdered form only it can react with air and form the beryllium oxide and beryllium nitride so magnesium also react with uh, air forms the magnesium oxide and magnesium nitride these two will be what uh, this magnesium oxide undergoes hydrolysis and forms the hydroxide magnesium nitride on hydrolysis will get the water uh, ammonia gas will get now reactivity towards the hydrogen if you had seen these all alkali metals except this beryllium and magnesium 
remaining forms the what mh2 type of hydrides means so each element combine with hydrogen and form the what mh2 type of hydride now here beryllium hydride can be prepared by reaction with lithium aluminium hydride okay now so then what happened beryllium hydride lithium chloride plus alcl3 we are going to get the calcium hydride so under pressure it can form the what cah2 it is called what hydrolith hydrolith this calcium hydride whenever it is dissolved in water so it gives the what calcium hydroxide calcium hydroxide plus hydrogen gas will be released so why it is called hydrolith because of it releases the what hydrogen gas so for that reason it is called what hydrolith now beryllium hydride and magnesium hydride are covalent but remaining all will be what ionic ionic hydride on electrolysis will produce the water here so they can produce this type of uh, uh, here at anode we will get the hydrogen gas at cathode we will get the metal generally metal halides whenever they are on uh, electrolysis what happens halogen will be obtained at anode and metal will be obtained at cathode no in the same way metal hydrides also here hydrogen is obtained at anode and uh, at cathode metals are obtained by electrolysis of these hydrides very important products which are obtaining at anode and cathode the stability of hydride decreases from beryllium to barium because this beryllium has the what polymeric structure in vapor phase and solid state it has the what polymeric structure these magnesium hydroxide is having the beryllium hydroxide is covalent magnesium hydroxide also slightly covalent but whereas these three hydrides are what ionic in nature beryllium hydride covalent here ionic nature if you had seen beryllium barium hydride will have the what more ionic character now calcium hydride whenever it is on dissolution on hydrolysis will get the hydrogen gas so for that reason it is called what hydrolith <laughs> and you can take uh, here most of these uh, high reactive metals react with water and liberate the what hydrogen gas metals on reaction with water they produce the hydrogen gas now reactivity with water will be more react top to bottom reactivity increases no but whereas beryllium won't react with the water directly now next one reaction with uh, halogens you can see so this all element will react with halogen and forms the mx2 type of halides mx2 type of halide the thermal decomposition of this ammonium beryl uh, ammonium fluoroberylate is the best route of preparation of beryllium fluoride generally beryllium fluoride is not uh, prepared directly it can be prepared by the thermal decomposition of ammonium fluoroberylate so we'll get the water beryllium fluoride beryllium chloride is conveniently made from the its oxide and also it can be it is conveniently made from the oxide beryllium oxide on reaction with carbon and chlorine we are going to get the water beryllium chloride at 600 to 800 kelvin and carbon monoxide now if you had taken this beryllium chloride beryllium halide so are covalent and hygroscopic in nature and fume in air due to hydrolysis and this beryllium chloride in solid state has the chain like structure but whereas it has the what a chain like structure beryllium chloride in solid state so that is what uh, it can have the like this uh, chain like structure in dimeric form it will exist it will exist in solid state it will exist in dimeric form but whereas in case of vapor phase it has the what a polymeric structure to form the what a chloride bridges which will be the chlorine bridges will be what here which are acting as bridge between the two beryllium atoms so it these are called chlorine bridges now in this beryllium will participate in which type of hybridization sp3 hybridization because which has the four bond but whereas here the beryllium will participate in what sp2 hybridization if you are taking only beryllium x2 in monomeric form beryllium shows the what sp hybridization do remember that hybridization is very important bf2 is very soluble while other metal halides of the group are less soluble so except to beryllium halide remaining all will be what ionic except this beryllium halide is the only the covalent one the beryllium halides are generally insoluble in water and soluble in organic solvent due to its covalent nature next one the tendency of formation of halide hydrates gradually decreases now you see here beryllium magnesium halide you take 
which can combine with eight number of water molecule its hydration energy is more compared to calcium calcium can combine with six number of water molecule strontium also six but barium you take here it will combine with only two hydrogen two water molecules only now these all second a group elements how first a group element react with ammonia and forms the blue color solution similarly second a group elements also forms the react with liquid ammonia and forms the water this ammoniated electrons ammoniated cations and ammoniated electron will be formed and due to that it has the water deep blue colored solution will be formed is that clear the oxides and halide compounds of beryllium and magnesium are more covalent than the those formed by the heavier and large sized members that is calcium strontium barium those all belongs to calcium or strontium barium halide will be ionic oxides and hydroxides if you are comparing so they form the mo type of oxides okay na so you can see these all metal oxide will have the basic nature and rock salt like structure whenever they dissolved in water they form the hydroxide except that beryllium hydroxide remaining all hydroxides are basic in nature the top to bottom if you had compared the solubility thermal stability and basic character of these hydroxide top to bottom increases it will be so it is very very important thermal stability as well as basic nature and solubility will be increases of the metal hydroxides from top to bottom the beryllium hydroxide is amphoteric in nature which can react with both base as well as acid it can react with the base and forms this sodium tetrahydroxyberylate it can react with hcl aqueous hcl and forms the tetra aqua beryllium chloride complex will be formed next one carbonate ion you see here carbonates will be formed by this which type of carbonate mco3 type of carbonates are formed by second a group element the solubility of carbonate in water will be decreases from top to bottom solubility of carbonate means which carbonate is more uh, soluble here beryllium carbonate or magnesium carbonate will be more soluble the bottom carbonates are least stable uh, soluble okay now why the beryllium carbonate is more soluble here it has the more hydration enthalpy so that overcome the uh, whatever the lattice enthalpy you can take the metal carbonate and decomposition will get the metal oxide and carbon dioxide you can take here thermal stability increases from top to bottom thermal stability increases but solubility will be decreases from top to bottom is that clear next sulfates beryllium sulfate and magnesium sulfate readily soluble in water due to what here greater hydration enthalpy okay now these are greater solubility just like a beryllium carbonate and magnesium carbonate here also beryllium sulfate magnesium sulfate are more soluble due to their greater hydration enthalpy which overcome the lattice enthalpy and here thermal stability if you had taken from top to bottom thermal stability will be increases next nitrates you can take here which type of nitrates are formed m n o 3 taken twice type of nitrates are formed by second a group which are prepared by the reaction with nitric acid we are going to get metal nitrate plus carbonic acid the metal nitrate undergo decomposition and forms the water reddish brown colored gas will be released by this metal nitrate now you can take the solubility in this case solubility of metal nitrates will be decreases from top to bottom but stability will be increases from top to bottom next you can take here beryllium carbide just now we had seen methane will get calcium carbide also methane but whereas if you take the here metal nitride whenever it is on hydrolysis will get the water ammonia one mole of metal nitrate on hydrolysis will get the two moles of ammonia next uses if you had seen beryllium and copper alloys are used in preparing the high tensile strength springs metallic beryllium is used in making windows of x-ray tubes it's a source of neutrons because it can react with alpha particle and produces the neutron more number of neutron magnesium aluminum alloys are being light in weight so they can be used in aircraft magnesium hydroxide is what a basic slightly basic so it is used as an antacid tablet in the name of milk of magnesia and also magnesium carbonate is ingredient of toothpaste also metal carbonate calcium is used as reducing agent for the extraction of some metals which are not reduced by carbon and carbon monoxide there we will use the calcium as reducing agent 
radium salts are used in the radiotherapy in the treatment of cancer now next one is compounds of beryllium here so what are the compounds of beryllium beryl beryl is the formula of 3 beo al2o3 6so2 it can be written as be3 al2 si6o80 so chrysoberyl beo al2o3 this all will be own formulas magnesium magnes magnesite mgco3 so camelite camelite is what is carnelite it is nothing but what kcl mgcl2 6h2o you can take the dolomite dolomite is what it is a mixture of two carbonates mgco3 and cso3 kesserite kesserite is what magnesium sulfate one water molecule whenever the epsom salt is heated we will get this kesserite now gypsum gypsum is 2h2o calcium sulfate 2h2o plaster of paris caso4 half h2o it can be represented in this form limestone is caso3 it is also called marble and fluorospar is what caf2 is called fluorospar dolomite is what it is a mixture of calcium carbonate and magnesium carbonate anhydride is what anhydrite is calcium sulfate is called anhydrite now you can see the beryllium hydrides here beh2 is covalent and magnesium hydride is also partially covalent remaining all will be ionic now the beryllium hydride will be there now this is polymeric in solid involving in hydrogen bonding it is a solid structure in solid it will be in vapor state in vapor state it can form the water it can beryllium is participating in sp2 hybridization but whereas in case of solid state it can form the water sp3 hybridization here in a vapor phase which has the water one three centered two electron bonds are there here hydrogen atom is acting as bridges between the two beryllium atom you can take this magnesium sulfate to 7h2o whenever it is heated 160 or 150 degrees celsius we'll get the water here kiss right we are going to get magnesium sulfate and 1h2o upon 200 degrees celsius we'll get the water complete removal of water molecule takes place here six water molecules are lost here completely one water molecule is also lost h2o magnesium sulfate on reaction with lamp black at 300 degrees celsius we are going to get magnesium oxide plus sulfur dioxide plus carbon dioxide we are going to get the magnesium oxide on reaction with coke at 2000 degree celsius we are going to get this magnesium carbide the magnesium carbide on hydrolysis will get the water propyne and carbon monoxide next you can see the quick lime here quick lime so what is quick lime in this case quick lime is what a cao is called what a quick lime how we are going to get that one quick lime by heating limestone marble then we are going to get calcium oxide which is on hydrolysis we'll get the calcium hydroxide it is called milk of lime calcium oxide on reaction with carbon dioxide we'll get the calcium carbonate that is limestone we'll get the calcium oxide is basic in nature so it react with acidic flux like silica and forms the calcium silicate and calcium oxide can react with acidic oxide like p4o10 and forms the calcium phosphate now this calcium hydroxide is what a cleared solution slaked lime it is called whenever it react with carbon dioxide limited amount it turns the lime water into milky white if you are passing excess of carbon dioxide then what happens we are going to get the cleared solution of calcium bicarbonate it milky whiteness will be disappears calcium hydroxide when react with chlorine we are going to get calcium chloride and calcium oxychloride we are going to get that is cao cl2 we are going to get that is bleaching powder we are going to get that bleaching powder consist of chlorines will participate in two types of oxidation state one chlorine will participate in plus one another chlorine will be in minus one oxidation state important one now gypsum you can take here gypsum is what calcium sulfate calcium sulfate dihydrated one is called gypsum how you are going to prepare this uh, calcium sulfate here whenever calcium salt calcium halide when react with sulfuric acid we are going to get calcium sulfate plus hcl the calcium sulfate 2h2o is also called albastar so it is a naturally available gypsum is called albastar next you can take the plaster of paris here the plaster of paris is nothing but what calcium sulfate hemihydrated one is said to be what plaster of paris the calcium sulfate 2h2o upon heating till 120 degree celsius we are going to get the pop plaster of paris will be obtained by heating gypsum up to 120 degree celsius we are getting pop 
by loss of one and of water molecule, one point five number of water molecule. If gypsum and POP is heated more than one twenty degree Celsius or three ninety three Kelvin, loses water completely from this gypsum. Then what happens? We'll get the water dead burnt gypsum. We'll get that is called water bluster, calcium sulfate. Whenever it is heated at very high temperature. Now the process of conversion of POP into hard mass after combining with the water molecule is called setting of that past of Paris. In that setting process, volume will be increases. The POP is used in the manufacturing of crucibles, statues, toys, models, and a Ganesh ideals. So those all can be used. Used for setting the bro fractured bones or back broken bones for the setting in proper position. And also here we will see the here calcium oxide will be there. No, that is quick lime is will act as what a mortar here. Mortar is what a mixture of one part of lime lime water and three part of sand and water will produce the what a mortar which is used in the construction purpose. So lime mortar is used for the construction and uh, here mortar mixed with cement is called what a cement mortar. This is harder and stronger than the Mortar, a mixture of limestone and clay. Whenever it is heated, gives the water hydraulic mortar. The hydraulic mortar on uh, uh, clay contains about water ten percent. Ten percent clay containing one is uh, it will have the water aluminosilicate. Now the mainly cement. Uh, cement is nothing but water. It is also called Portland cement. Portland cement. Portland cement is uh, consist of mainly. average composition if you had seen calcium oxide will be major proportion when we are comparing this calcium oxide with this metal oxides okay na this metal oxides may except to this silicon the aluminum oxide and magnesium oxide fe2o3 the calcium oxide proportion will be two times the the metal oxide proportion okay na so approximately 10 3 to means it will be how much it is around uh, 30% it will be so that uh, 32 times the calcium oxide if you are taking then it will be pure one pure cement it has the good quality so calcium oxide silica al2o3 magnesium oxide fe2o3 so3 this is the percentage composition which is present in the cement then it is called portland cement for a good quality of cement the ratio of silica sio2 to the alumina should be about to, in between the 2.5 to 4 it will be you see here 20 to 5 how much it is 4 it will be in the and the ratio of lime to the total oxides of silicon alumina and magnesium oxide will be close to the double it is two times it should be remember that one pure quality of good quality of cement if you want to prepare so cement is formed by mixing the limestone and clay forms the water cement clinker the clinker is mixed with 2 to 3 percent by weight of gypsum 2 to 3 percent by weight of gypsum is mixed. To say uh, why we are adding that gypsum, uh, whatever the cement will have the water setting nature. Whenever it ma contact with moisture, it becomes what hard substance. To slow down the process of setting of cement, we are adding the gypsum. The important ingredient in Portland cement sir, uh, it is a di calcium silicate will be what 26 percent Ca to SiO4 by mixing those all. Tri calcium silicate will be formed Ca3SiO5, and tri calcium aluminate is also formed Ca3Al2O6 is also formed. Is that clear? Now role of calcium and magnesium in biology. If you had taken, so in adult contains the 25 grams of magnesium, 1200 grams of calcium, 5 grams of iron, and 0.06 grams of copper in our body. So in a daily requirement of calcium will be about 200 to 300 milligrams of calcium is needed. Now chlorophyll contains the magnesium. The calcium concentration in plasma is regulated by two hormones. What are those? Calcitonin and parathyroid. These two are the hormone which maintains the level of calcium. About 99 percent of our body calcium is present in the bones and teeth. Okay na? Now we will see the numerical questions on this uh, alkaline earth metals. Now you see the first question: the value of n in the molecular formula of Ben Al two Si six O eighteen. So this type of problem we had seen in the last class also. To identify that sum of the oxidation state should be zero. Beryllium belongs to second group, so plus two. 
प्लस टू इंटू अल्यूमियम इज प्लस थ्री प्लस सिक्स इंटू सिलिका इज प्लस फोर प्लस एटीन इंटू मैनस टू द सम मस्ट बी ईक्वल टू जीरो ना हियर टू एन हियर वाट हापन प्लस सिक्स प्लस ट्वेंटी फोर हियर मैनस थर्टी सिक्स इट विल बी ना हौ मच इट इस मैनस थर्टी मैनस थर्टी ट्वेंटी फोर इट विल बी वाट सिक्स मैनस सिक्स इट कम्स टू दिस सैड प्लस सिक्स एन इज ईक्वल टू हौ मच इट विल बी थ्री इज दट क्लियर ना नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन when gypsum is heated to at 393 kelvin which is nothing but 120 degrees the compound formed is calcium sulfate x number of water molecule so the value of x is whenever the gypsum that is calcium sulfate to h2o is heated to till 120 degrees or 393 kelvin anything you can take both are same in different units so you'll we'll get the what to pop calcium sulfate hemi hydrated calcium sulfate will get here along with that 3 by 2 mole of water so it is hemi hydrated one in place of x here what we have 1 1 by 2 x is equal to 1 by 2 that is nothing but 0.5 it will be is that clear now next the difference of water molecule in one molecule of each gypsum and pop what is the difference in water molecule here in gypsum we have the water in gypsum we have two number of water molecule in pop we have the water half that is the difference will be how much 2 minus half it will be that is 2 minus half is nothing but what 4 minus 1 that is 3 by 2 that is nothing but 1.5 it will be is that all now next one for good quality of cement the ratio of sum of the silica al2o3 and fe2o3 to the calcium oxide will be how much it is two times it will be so when you are comparing only silica percentage it will be 2.5 to 4 but when you are comparing with cal quick lime should be how much it will be it is double that of silica alumina and fe2o3 next you see here calcium carbide on hydrolysis we are going to get calcium hydroxide this is calcium carbide so we are going to get the what acetylene gas we are going to get x will be what acetylene magnesium carbide on hydrolysis mg2c3 we are going to get the what here magnesium hydroxide plus propyne we are going to get ch3 c triple bond ch it is ethyne it is propyne so x and y we got now now what they are asking here the total number of pi bonds present in x and y here in x x number of pi bonds will be how many 2 in y how many number of pi bonds so 2 total they are asking so 2 plus 2 will be how much it is 4 pi bonds 4 pi bond here 2 pi bonds here also 2 pi bond is that clear next one during the conversion of 1 mole of gypsum to 1 mole of plaster of paris the percentage loss in water is you see here caso4 gypsum is converted to gypsum is converted to plaster of paris caso4 dot half h2o now what is the loss of its weight they are asking now here uh, gypsum will have the what is the weight of gypsum here if you had calculated the weight of this gypsum it will be calcium sulfate it is how much you will get calcium 40 plus sulfur 32 plus 64 means you will get the 136 plus 2 into 18 it will be so total how much it will be 172 grams it is 172 grams we got now here what about this calcium sulfate it is it is 136 plus one water molecule 18 so half water molecule means it will be 9 136 plus 9 will be how much it is uh it is 150 uh, 140 145 it will be 145 grams it is okay now now what they are asking percentage loss in water the percentage loss in water how you will get 172 minus 145 by total weight of gypsum will be how much 172 into 100 if you do so you will get the answer is how much you are going to get the approximately 15.6% you will get is that clear it's important question
which coordinated number complexes are formed by edta with most metal ion solution generally this edta is uh, combines with most reactive metal most reactive metal most reactive metal with the positive charge di positive most reactive that is second a group elements like what a small size second a group element calcium and magnesium these two combines with this edta first what is mean by this edta ethylene ethylene diamine ethylene diamine tetraacetate tetra acetate is called what ethylene the edta now you see here first structure here diamine they are saying two nitrogen so ethylene diethylene here methylene group carbons are there so two carbons are there so it is called ethylene now it is said to be what tetraacetate tetraacetate means acetate group c will be so ch2 c double bond o o minus here ch2 c double bond o o minus it will be now in this case also ch2 c double bond o o minus 1 acetate 2 acetate total how many four acetates are there here each this oxygen donate the pair of electron this one donate this one donate this one donate total four donor atoms and also each nitrogen has the what one one lone pair these lone pairs also donated to the metal atom and form the what hexadentate ligand it will form it forms the hexadentate ligand you can take here two nitrogens two nitrogen can donate the pair of electron to this central metal atom and also here this each nitrogen consists of total of how many so tetraacetate no ch2 c double bond o o minus now here also this nitrogen is also ch2 c double bond o o minus this oxygen donate and this oxygen also donates one more acetate ion is there one more acetate ion ch2 c double bond o o minus this oxygen also donates now here another oxygen another acetate ch2 c double bond o o minus this oxygen is also donate total how many nearest neighboring atoms are there so total 6 so its coordination number will be how much it is 6 is that clear now magnesium sulfate it is called what to epsom salt epsom salt whenever this epsom salt upon heating 150 or 160 degree celsius we are going to get the magnesium sulfate by loss of six number of water molecule so you'll get the what one h2o mgso4 dot one h2o you'll get x is equal to how much here one now whenever it is heated to 200 degree celsius completely water will be eliminated and we are going to get magnesium sulfate plus h2o we are going to get is it having any number of water molecule here there is no water molecule so y is equal to zero and what they are asking the product of x and y they are saying x into y that is one into zero that is equal to zero is that clear now next question how many of the following will turn moist red litmus to blue and finally white so which one will turn the moist red litmus to blue generally basic one and also it must be the basic color that is blue color will be completely changes to color less it becomes so now here you can take this lithium oxide metal oxide is there and the metal oxide beryllium oxide is amphoteric nature it won't uh, uh, converts the water blue litmus to red it will changes to blue litmus to red that's it okay now we'll see the what happens actually which type of compounds will convert here this lithium oxide metal oxides and magnesium oxide you can take this strontium oxide these all will be what metal oxides metal oxides whenever these are dissolved in water they forms the water metal hydroxide these are having basic nature basic nature then what happened red litmus changes to blue color red litmus changes to blue color it will be blue will be remains as it is but whereas they are asking it finally converted to white means this lithium oxide magnesium oxide and beryllium oxide also beryllium oxide also okay and uh, you can take this strontium oxide these want to form the water metal oxide the beryllium oxide will have the water amphoteric nature 
amphoteric nature amphoteric both acidic as well as basic nature now next one is what is left over ko3 rbo2 ch2o2 now you can take here ch2o2 whenever it is dissolved in water you are going to get ccm hydroxide along with that hydrogen peroxide you are going to get the ccm hydroxide csoh will have the water basic nature will have the basic nature which converts the water uh, red litmus to blue color blue color so this hydrogen peroxide is what it is having the bleaching nature it can bleach as the if the formed blue color will be changes to in presence of hydrogen peroxide it becomes colorless that is what uh, the ccm peroxide will convert the red litmus to blue and it becomes uh, colorless now you can take the superoxides here what are the superoxides we have rbo2 so superoxide and also you can take the barium it is a superoxide rbo2 uh, rbo2 peroxide sorry it is superoxide rbo2 and barium o2 yeah here barium oxide this is barium peroxide okay na so these two will produce the water hydroxides and convert it to red litmus to blue but whereas rbo2 is what it is a superoxide so whenever it is dissolved in water so rbo2 whenever it dissolved in water it forms the water oxygen gas and hydroxide ion the hydroxide ion basic so this basic one what it will do it changes the red litmus to blue red litmus will be changes to blue color but what happens here it can form the water oxygen this oxygen converts this blue into colorless blue into colorless is that clear now what is left over ko3 is left over it is ozonide potassium ozonide it will be what it is potassium ozonide potassium ozonide whenever it is dissolved in water whenever it is dissolved in water we are going to get potassium hydroxide plus oxygen gas is formed it is having the water basic nature so the formed oxygen what it will do the basic compound will change as the red litmus to blue color so the formed oxygen will convert the blue into colorless so how many of the compound are changing colorless red to blue and blue to colorless here so here these are not now cesium peroxide cesium peroxide and barium peroxide those two are converting the water red litmus to blue and colorless white that is nothing but white and also perox superoxide like rbo2 and also potassium ozonide ko3 now remaining will not convert so how many are there total of four it will be four compound total of four compounds which are converting the water completely into colorless red to blue blue to colorless it will be yeah this is about what alkaline earth metals complete you can see for more numerical chapter wise numerical questions in the description box you will find all the links and also you can see the other playlist also in the links playlist links also you can find and uh, i hope so this video is helpful to your uh, iit mains and uh, neat level quick revision okay na in one shot i had explained thank you have a nice day keep watching upper chemistry classes